Hey guys, welcome back. So quick disclaimer before I begin this video. Um, we were testing out these new microphones that attach to your iPhone because I want to simplify this shooting as much as I can. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if it was the 105 degree weather <laughs> that did it, but it was malfunctioning a little bit or if we were testing out how far they were going and it was more than its limit. So during portions of the video, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a voiceover just to kind of keep the flow going. Um, I was going to do uh, subtitles, but I feel like you know, for you guys that listen with headphones, it would just be easier, you know, to do a voiceover. So uh, don't mind that part. We're going to test it out again in more ideal conditions and see if that fixes it. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Let us know if you guys have any questions on this video at the end. Leave a comment, all that good stuff. Um, and thank you for watching. All right, so today we decided, or at least I decided, to get out of the house because I've been home way too much. So I got my friend Taryn and Sergio. We're heading over to the sand dunes to do a little bit of shooting and we're gonna film a little uh, tutorial on how to overpower the sun with one flash. All right, so today we drove four hours. We could have done this in the backyard and it would have been the same thing that we're about to show you guys, but I felt like getting out of the house and um, yeah, this is a cooler background. So. so we're gonna use one flash in order to overpower the background as I was saying and what we're gonna be doing is not using any modifiers. We're gonna shoot it with bare flash. Um, so there's gonna be no soft boxes, no umbrellas, none of that in order to get the most power Basically, possible. We need all the power that we can get out of it. If we start using umbrellas, soft boxes, all that, it's gonna kill a little bit of light, usually a stop or two. Um, we could use a mag sphere. But generally speaking, since we're doing a very wide shot, the specular highlights are going to be almost non-existent. So because of that reason, when we're doing our wide shots, we don't necessarily use any modifiers. If we were doing more of a close-up, maybe something with high-speed sync or something like that, then we'd put something to soften the light so it, doesn't, um, so, it, so it doesn't look so harsh. But in this situation, since we're doing a super wide shot, it's not really going to matter much. And I am sweaty and huffing and puffing as I'm talking because I just went for a mini marathon all the way up these dunes. So uh, yeah, we got Sergio today. I'm going to use him as our example. And let's go ahead and underexpose that background. You guys know that 200, 250th of a second is the native sync speed on this camera. And um, so if 250th of a second is the native sync speed, then the only thing you can really control to underexpose it even more is your f-stop, your aperture. So instead of being at 2.8 or 4 or anything like that, we're actually going to be at, let me see, so ISO, ISO 100, so F14, F16, because it's basically the middle of the day right now. So that's what we're starting at, 250th of a second, 100 ISO, F16. Cool. In a situation like this, um, one thing that I try to avoid, but sometimes I still do, uh, if I have to, is leaving the light stand in the frame. So if we leave the light stand in the frame, if you do that, just make sure that you put it in a location where you know it's gonna be easy to Photoshop out. So if you look at this, you're gonna to try to put it just in an area where you know that if you clone from the left or from the right, it's gonna be pretty simple to clone out. I've made the mistake before of putting it and it was next to like a handrail and there was like stones and, there was, and it was a lot more difficult to Photoshop that out. So if you are gonna leave the light stand in your frame, just make sure you're already thinking about editing and knowing how you're gonna remove it out of the frame. Generally, we try to keep it out of the frame so that way we don't have to do any Photoshopping, but if you have to do, if it's an uneven surface like this, or you know the situation that's all you can do is leave it in the frame, just make sure you leave it somewhere where it's gonna be easy to Photoshop out. So right here, we're at F4 at 250th of a second. Obviously, if you were shooting at your native sync speed and you wanted a depth of field, obviously that's not gonna work. For this, for these purposes, what we're doing is just to underexpose the background. So if we wanna underexpose the background, you raise your f-stop, so watch. F8, F10, 11. F13, F14, around there is where we want to be. So around there is probably going to be money. Now there's some dots. We're going to have to remove those in post. With photo, it's a lot easier. I'm waiting for that wind to pass. I'm going to point this way. So generally speaking, what you want to do is underexpose quite a bit and then hit your subject with flash. Okay, so first things first, what I want to show you guys is how we use just one AD200 to overpower the sun. Uh, I know that a lot of people think that you need like those massive AD400, AD600, and yeah, they help, but you don't necessarily need those giant 
flashes in order to overpower the sun. Right now we're out here at 250th of a second at f14 and I'm pretty sure, no, I, I mean we've been doing it for years, I know that it should be enough to overpower the sun. Um, so yeah, we're going to have Sergio step a few feet that way. I'm trying not to turn because there's a lot of wind coming and I don't want the microphone to pick it up. Um, and yeah, we're going to start with our native sync speed, 250th of a second, f14. Oh, and the flash is more than likely going to be full power. In the middle of the day like this, we start at full power and then work our way down. So we may not need full power, but more than likely we will. So basically, anytime middle of the day, you're going to start at full power, go from there. Well, the audio got a little messed up in this portion. Um, what I was saying is that while we're shooting this, we usually count. So we'll go one, two, three for two reasons. One, also, I didn't mean to film this in slow motion. I'm not trying to look cool. It just worked out that way. So one, uh, one reason is to give the flash time to recycle. Even in your native sync speed, even if you're not in high speed sync, it's going to need time to recycle. So by doing the one, two, three count, it's giving it time to recycle and hit again. Because if you hit it before it recycles, it's not going to flash. Two, um, it's also to give the couple or the wedding party an opportunity for them to be ready. So if you go one, two, three, it'll trigger them to look at the camera. Another trick that we do sometimes is if we see somebody that closes their eyes a lot, we tell them close your eyes. And then when we get to three, open them up. So we go one, two, three, click, and that way they know that their eyes are going to be open. So that's what we were doing there in this portion. That's also the professional way of holding your camera. So you got to work your thighs and make sure you hold that thing tight. Stan will now be in the frame and we'll be able to remove it pretty easily. Um, we got a guy for that. Oh, oh, oh. We'll get somebody to clean that up. We're the ones that got to clean that up. During this portion, I was discussing how we're going to leave the flash in the frame and out the box, it looks a lot better, um, obviously with more power being closer to our subject. Uh, it's just a matter of being able to Photoshop it out easily, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we only do this when we absolutely feel like we have to, but generally speaking, we have enough data, even if it's out of the frame, um, where it'll still have that pop kind of feel even without doing this method. But I just wanted to show you guys the options so you have them at your disposal. Whether you leave them in the frame knowing how you're gonna Photoshop it out or if you have it right outside the frame to have just enough data to still make it look like it's gonna pop. And for the following portion, I wanted to show what we like to call is a superhero shot, which is a shot that we do a lot of the times with the groom um, before, you know, if you have some time to kill because usually the guys take a little bit quicker to get ready. So you have a few more minutes start experimenting with a little off-camera lighting. Um, what we do is we keep the flash pretty close to the frame. We go pretty wide and fairly close, which I know sounds counterintuitive. It sounds like something you should not be doing because it, it's gonna stretch out. But as long as you leave the portion of their heads closest to the center of the frame, it's not gonna stretch out the important bits. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's also, we usually show them, um, like that shot like that always looks cool. So we always try to show them to kind of get them enthused about their photos. Because a lot of the time, especially with groomsmen, they're just kind of like, yeah, whatever. You know, I don't like photos. We hear that all the time. So, you know, if you show them something that looks cool, you usually get them on your side. And they're like, oh, shit, maybe he does know what he's doing. Let's listen to him. So, you know, get them on your side so that way the rest of the day can go a little smoother. Where they know that if they come to us, we're going to give them something that's cool and not cheesy or corny. All right, so mission complete. We got some photos for Sergio. He needed for, for an article. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. It was really hot. I didn't know where my drone was because my phone was overheating. And turns out it was landing at the home point. So that was nice, but um, I had no idea where the hell it went for a second. Uh, oh, and I think it was overheating again. So yeah, that does it for now. We're heading back to uh, back home, back where it's not 100 degrees for some of us. <laughs> All right.